Hi everybody, I'm Eleanor Shano, and as the old saying goes, don't touch that dial or oh wait, that remote, because the next half hour is all about you. We are going to offer proof that age has no boundaries when it comes to beauty. You are going to meet four Pittsburgh women who beat out 2,000 other women from all across the country on AARP's Model Search Contest. And you know, there is a lot of controversy surrounding bypass, gastric bypass surgery, but two people will share their experiences with you. Plus, it's time to get on the ball. That's the latest craze in healthy fitness. We're gonna have all of that and much more next on LifeQuest. This is really amazing. Nine women over the age of 50 featured in a recent issue of AARP magazine. They are winners in a model search contest selected because of their vitality and their ability to age gracefully. That's nine women selected from a field of more than 2,000. And guess what? Four of them are from right here in Pittsburgh. I guess we shouldn't be surprised because we are very proud of the remarkable women in our region. And I want you to meet these remarkable women right now. I think we're going to start with, uh, we'll, we'll start with the baby of the bunch, all <laughs> well, right? Thank you, thank you. Beverly Piaquadia. And since your ages have all been published nationally, 62 years old. That's correct. All right. Then Bever Vicki Cavanaugh. Vicki Cavanaugh, Grandma Vicki, right? Yeah, Age 64, yeah. and Vicki Rideout. Uh, Vicki, I don't believe it. 70? 70. Mm -hmm. You're sure? Positive. And Joan Lally, <laughs> not 72. Yes. No. Yes. This is, this is just amazing. I want to hear all about this. First of all, the contest. Now, how did you all hear? How did we end up with four women from Pittsburgh winning? First of all, a lot of you must have entered, and how, where did you hear about the contest? Well, we were very lucky, I guess. Um, my, I heard about it from my sister Mary. She also lives in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. and uh, she saw the ad in the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, and she wanted to know, did we want to go down and get our picture taken? Go down where? Where did you go? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. We went to Point Park. Point Park, yeah, and this was, was during, the during the art festival. Yeah. During the art festival. Yeah. And Joan, I know your husband Jim said it was a Sunday, yeah. it was a nice day, and he actually encouraged you to go. He did, and he drove me down. And um, it wasn't that nice, really. It was overcast mm -hmm. and it was threatening to rain. So, uh, but we walked, I walked over and sat down, and they said, We'll take your picture, filled out a little form, and that was the end of it. I never thought any more that about was it. it. That, that was, was it. it. They didn't That's ask the any way. questions. Mm -hmm. you just, no. They took your picture. Just yes. a headshot. And we filled out a form with our okay. name. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, Vicky, where were you? <coughs> Excuse me. Where were you when you were told that you were a winner? What, what were you doing? I was cooking dinner, <laughs> and my husband called in and said, "It's for you, AARP." I said. Tell them to call back. I said, invite yeah. them to mail I already, something. I already bought my subscription. <laughs> and I really thought it was about yeah. a subscription. And um, he said, okay. So Nicole called <laughs> back. <laughs> and when she told me, she said, um, this is Nicole from AARP the magazine. Do you remember the contest you were in, the Real, Mo uh, Real People Model Search? And I said, yes. She said, well, you're a winner. I said, uh, what? <laughs> she said, a winner. I said, I completely forgot about it. I put my slip in the Bible, which I did, mm -hmm. and forgot about it. I, I just couldn't well, believe now, it. Well, now, now we know where to put our lottery <laughs> ticket, right? Right in the Bible, all right? Okay, now, the next step, and this is what I really want to hear all about. They invited you to go to New York. Yes, right. And what happened in New York? It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. They, uh... Wined and they, dined you. They wined and dined us. We stayed in a lovely hotel. The Hudson. The yeah. Hudson. Very yes. upscale Ian Schrager Hotel. Uh, yes. All right, now we've seen the pictures in the magazines, and I think, I think we've had them on the screen, right? Uh, let's bring a couple of, no, we don't have them on the screen. Well, I have, uh, here, for example, uh, this is Beverly's lovely, lovely picture. Mm -hmm. Beverly, what kind of, I mean, you are beautiful. The picture oh, reflects you. your beauty, but they obviously did a little bit of a 
touch-up job on makeup and hair and mm -hmm. everything? Well, they did. Uh, actually, they asked us to come without our makeup, mm -hmm. which was kind of hard. That's a little <laughs> scary. <laughs> it but, was quite uh, scary. <laughs> actually, to be quite honest with you, the makeup was very, very light. Yeah. And not as much as we would have liked because uh, it was just a little bit of the foundation, a little, very little mascara, and then the lipstick. For myself, I've always been a red <laughs> red lipstick. Right. Yeah. So they had very light lipstick on us, so we were kind of feeling washed out. Yes. Well, you can yeah. see how beautiful, Vicki. Uh, your hair is, they, they curled it a little they, bit. It's different, yes. My yes. hair is different mm -hmm. there. And uh, let's right, see. They did, they did uh, curl our hair. They worked yeah, right. our hair they a did. little. This is, this is lovely. Uh, Vicki, that is just a, a beautiful shot. Now, Thank did you, you pose for that? Well, we did. Um, we did all sorts of poses. I'm, they must have taken hundreds of, oh, of, hundreds, of hundreds digital of pictures. pictures. And the photographer was absolutely fabulous, wasn't he? Was. he? he was Steve Gerald, oh, and he, he was, was so yeah, good. Look at that yes. picture. Well, every yes. one was better than the next. Mm -hmm. It was just uh, grand. Now, mm -hmm. fast forward. The magazine comes out. Yes. You can't yes. wait. <laughs> How did you get it? Did you get it in the mail like everybody? Mine else? hasn't come yet. <laughs> just no, we got mine. our FedEx package. We got a FedEx I haven't package. Gotten they fed my issue it. yet. I was in Florida and my daughter called me and she said you received a package from AARP. Oh yeah. FedEx. Right. Mm -hmm. it was and it FedEx. had uh, three copies in of the magazine and some cosmetics and yeah. a nice letter. Mm -hmm. And also that Leslie Bauman's uh, yeah. book, yeah, the book. dermatologist that uh, evaluated our skin uh -huh. and advised us on what to use. Yes. Uh, we received her book. What are your beauty secrets? Real fast, we only have a couple of minutes. Well, um, really, I never use soap on my face. Um, I use moisturizer, and I guess just lucky because my parents have uh, very good skin. And, your, and your I secret? have to say the same thing. I have good genes, and I exercise. That and I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. Well, I do use. Are we allowed to use the brand name? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just is it I a moisturizer? No, it's a Neutrogena facial bar. Okay. I have used for years. All right. And no foundation, just a moisturi moisturizer, and that's it. And Joan? And um, I eat well and exercise. I think that's the secret. And yeah, I do take care of my is. skin. I use yes. good foundation, good. Well, it all shows. Yeah. And uh, you just don't know how proud we are of all of you to represent our region nationally. Quickly, has life changed since you've been yes. cover girls? It has yes. changed. <laughs> what, what happens? You don't have to kick the garbage out anymore? <laughs> no. No. You get a lot of attention? Yes. People recognize you? A lot of attention. Yes. A lot of old friends yes, oh. from have gotten we in haven't touch heard with us. for years. Oh, yes. 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 Cards. Yes. Calls. Well, congratulations. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, thank you thank for you. having us. Thank you for thank coming you. and, well, and you sharing your wonderful stories with, with all of our viewers. Well, we enjoy thank your you. wonderful program, too, thank Eleanor. You, thank, thank you, Joan. Thank you. You know, for some people, staying fit is not so easy. And coming up, Lynn Sawyer is going to introduce us to two local people who have decided to opt for gastric bypass surgery. We're going to hear their stories next on Life Quest. We've tackled the topic of obesity on Life Plus so many times. We've discussed the health risks, the options, and even the costs associated with it. But obesity still continues to be a very, very big epidemic in our region. You know, Lynn Sawyer had a chance recently to speak with two people who made the decision to have gastric bypass surgery, which is not an easy choice to make. You're right, Eleanor. Gastric bypass surgery is considered somewhat controversial. The two people you're about to meet, though, chose gastric bypass in a desperate effort to lose weight and save their own lives. 
was a prisoner in my own body, uh, not able to go to events, not able to wear nice clothes. You hear the stories of eating 12 sandwiches and uh, this and that, but actually it was just continuous. It was out of control. So out of control that Lance Davis of Mercer was tipping the scales at 560 pounds. How do you gain 500 pounds? Well, it, there's many factors, I guess one of them probably genetics, but uh, just bad eating habits, you know, eating before you go to bed and continuing the cycle day after day, year after year. In fact, the eating and the weight gain went on for more than 20 years. Then one day, Lance got so sick he had to be airlifted to a hospital. I had had complete renal failure and a lot of different other things associated with obesity and I ended up at Allegheny General in November of 2002. I was unable to walk, uh, completely immobilized, bedridden, um, and I backed down. And the doctors uh, reassured me that there was light at the end of the tunnel. That light turned out to be an operation called a laparoscopic gastric bypass. With this procedure, there is no large incision. Instead, the surgeon makes several small incisions in the abdominal area. A tiny camera called the laparoscope is then inserted into the body. Using a video screen and specialized instruments, the surgeon reduces the size of the stomach, creating a new stomach about the size of a thumb. Dr. Joseph Colella is the director of bariatric surgery at Allegheny General Hospital. It really works in three ways. In the most obvious way is that you can't eat very much food anymore. But that would be torture for anybody if you just said, well, all of a sudden we're not going to let you eat very much food. You get very hungry. But the gastric bypass operation has been shown to dramatically reduce people's appetite. And the third way it works is there is a small component of malabsorption to it. In other words, the amount of calories that you consume are less efficiently absorbed after the surgery than before the surgery. I'm glad I made the decision. It wasn't an easy one, but uh, in retrospect, you know, I mean, now I'm a success, but it doesn't end with just, just the procedure, you know, it's, it's a lifestyle change. Let's take a look, see how things are healing up. Today, Lance is a fraction of his former self. He now weighs 190 pounds. I went from a 72-inch waist to a 36 in less than two years. Pretty incredible. I'm grateful every day, every day. Lance is one of the growing number of people, classified as the super obese, who are opting for laparoscopic gastric bypass surgery. Gastric bypasses done laparoscopically allow patients to recover faster, with less pain and less chance of infection. I'll hear those little incisions. Yep, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. What is super obese? In the surgical community, in the medical community, we, we talk about the super obese patients. That means that you're not just 100 pounds over your ideal body weight, you're sometimes two, three, and 400 pounds above your ideal body weight. The new trend in the care of the super obese now is to have developed enough skill laparoscopically to do the laparoscopic gastric bypass on patients who have enormous, enormously thick abdominal walls, even more than the usual gastric bypass patient, thick uh, tissue that we have to work around. In Waynesburg, Greene County, 34-year-old Quentin Arbogast is cautiously optimistic about his laparoscopic gastric bypass surgery. At 715 pounds, he cannot remember ever a time when he was not overweight. I can remember back to uh, kindergarten where the weight problems began, you know, being ridiculed by other children and it started then, you know, and seemingly throughout the years I've continued to put on weight. And every time I'd lose weight, you know, I would gain some weight back. My whole family, and one, you know, on both sides are obese. You know, my, my mother's been obese all her life. My father, well over 300 pounds. My brother's always been dealing with weight issues off and on, dieting off and on to lose weight. Quentin's been on many diets, but so far none has worked. Now he has a sense of urgency. Losing weight has become a matter of life or death. Oh, I've been on, you know, low carb diets. I've been on diets like uh, cabbage diets, you know, counting calories, over the counter pills, 
Um, I've actually had some therapy to try and help me lose weight. Um, I've, I remember being hypnotized to try and, you know, overcome it. That, you know, none of which have worked. Now with what the support of friends and family and a devoted fiance, Quentin says he's ready for surgery. Surgery that comes with big risks. I don't think that I could sit here and say that anybody's prepared for death. Nobody wants to die. But I think that the risk of death on the surgery table for, you know, it's, it's easier to try. It's an attempt because if I stay in this situation, you know, I'm, I'm going to die. Whether it be, you know, tomorrow or next week or next month. See, Friday evening. I am very scared. I have to believe for him and for myself and for my children that he is going to be okay. No problems. He is going to come out smiling. But on the other side, I have to face what am I going to do if something were to happen. And that's hard because I don't want him to know what I'm thinking. What are some of the complications? The significant ones, of course, are if you die. If and when it occurs, it usually results from a pulmonary embolus, which is a blood clot in the legs that forms during the surgery, and at some point after the surgery breaks off, travels up to the heart and lungs. Other things that can happen, bleeding in the abdomen during or after the surgery, the incidence of infection in the abdomen or in the incisions, and the incidence of a leak or, or, or the breakdown of the suture line between the stomach and the small intestine. How do you choose a doctor then to perform this surgery? Well, the most important thing that I would say is to talk to the physician about how many they've done, how many laparoscopic gastric bypasses they have done. It's critically important to know that. And it, don't be embarrassed to ask that physician if they've had any deaths, what those deaths were a result of. Are you going to start playing table tennis again? Yeah. As the time for Quentin's surgery approaches, he and his fiance hope the operation is successful because they want to do things they've never done before. Yeah. I would love to go to the beach and just have him walk the beach with me. Honestly, that's, I want to see him to be able to walk and not feel like he needs to get, sit down. I have a daughter and I've never taken her for a walk in the park. And that's one thing that I'm looking forward to, you know. I'm going to take my family to, to the beach, you know. I've never been to the beach. They want to go to Disney World. I want to do that, you know, take them fishing, you know, have a normal, normal life. And that's something I can't do right now. And in a few months, I'm going to be able to do that. Great couple. Quentin Arbogast has undergone gastric bypass surgery, which went well, and we will follow his progress and get back to you on how he's doing. In the meantime, Lance Davis has lost a total of 400 pounds and is doing quite well. It's what unimaginable, isn't it? What a touching story. Oh. And I'm so glad to hear that Quentin is doing well, and we'll wait for your next report. Thank okay. you so Thanks, much, Ellen. Lynn. Well, coming up next, it's time to get on the ball if you want to stay fit and trim, and we'll see what that's all about next on LifeQuest.
I think all of you know that we're always looking for ways here on LifeQuest to help you stay fit and healthy. And even though most of you have seen an exercise ball, you might just not know how to use one properly. I sure don't, but I'm going to get a lesson from my guest, personal trainer, Janelyn Budzik. Janelyn, thank you so much. Uh, you know, we preach around here that you can stay fit and flexible regardless of age, Absolutely. if you have a little discipline, right? Absolutely. Now, I've seen these balls, and uh, I think I've watched people work out on them, but I haven't done it myself. So let's have ball exercise 101 and you teach me what to Not do. Not a problem. The ball is nothing to be afraid of. You just have to make it your friend and, you know, just be careful with uh, your balance and take it easy. You don't want to, you know, try anything too advanced too quickly. So we're going to do lots of basic exercises. Okay. Why do you like the ball? Um, I like the ball because it challenges more muscles than if you were just seated in a chair or using a machine. Mm -hmm. So you're able to use lots of mo lots more muscles and it gives you just a great overall workout for your core. And one size does not fit all. I see over here, there's this big one, but you said this would not be for me because this is for a taller person. Absolutely. Um, that's for people who are probably 5'9 and above. They're okay. going to get a 65 centimeter ball. This is a 55 centimeter ball for 5'7 right. to 5'2. OK. Now, uh, you can work all body parts. Yes. All right, let's start with, what body part do you want to start let's with? Let's start with our legs, one of our largest muscle groups. I'm going to have you have a seat on the ball. Okay. Okay, take a seat right there, and you're going to have nice, tall posture from your core. Okay, and you have to kind of get yourself settled on here, but it feels good. Yes. I yes. know some people have a ball that they sit on when they work their computer. And that is something that is great to do if you work in an office type setting to get some added because you really do day. have to you really do have to sit up straight and you have to engage your core absolutely in order to stay on here absolutely okay what are we going to do okay the first thing you do is bring your heels back a little bit there you go perfect so that you're a nice ninety degree angle and here's some dumbbells for you I'm just right. going to have how you, many pounds those are just fives five pounds I'm going to have you rest them on your legs. I like the way she says, they're just <laughs> And then uh -huh. what you're going to do is you're going to take one leg, and now you have to be careful to balance, and you're just going to gradually extend it outward. Oh, yes? Mm-hmm. Now, see, this is a little tricky. Okay. That's a little, now this is the leg, you know, this hip okay. doesn't work, so. Well, okay. what we can do is we oh. can take these away. <laughs> Yeah, yeah and then, I think we would start doing that. And then we I think we would also on... start, I would probably start with a wall close by. <laughs> Absolutely. You and know, that's the you other thing. Have you can to have to get a, used to this. You can have a significant other or a friend or a workout partner help you wall. balance. So if you want to <laughs> hold on or a wall or a handrail. All right. Now, if you would hold on, I could mm -hmm. try a weight. Well, I think we have the idea here. The idea is to, as you said, make the ball your friend. Yes. And to stay balanced and all you do is you don't have to extend very high, just to 90 degrees with one leg. So if you want to balance. <laughs> balance. And just use one leg at a time. Don't switch. So if you want to hold right, my this, hand. This would help you You can with do balance. one. Absolutely. See, I'm always very honest with my viewers. They know when I. Right. When I can do something and when I'm. Well, stick cannot. with one leg. Don't alternate. Just try and balance oh. with one. Okay. And then as we get more advanced. Okay, and then we then put we can this. The idea, though, is to put the weight here. To hold the weight here, and <laughs> yes. I think that's enough. Can we move to another <laughs> Absolutely. body Absolutely. Absolutely. And as you can see, there's different variations to play mm -hmm. with the right. advanced yes. versus the not. Okay. Let's do... a few um, minutes, so we have to move quickly. Let's do our back. Okay. So we're just going to stand up. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to have you, if you can, lie on the ball on your stomach. Okay. <laughs> We should have tried a little bit of this first, maybe. Okay. So I don't totally embarrass myself. Oh, no, and you're going to have your feet on the floor at the whole time. Oh, feet on the floor. Feet okay. are stable, okay. yes. All right. And you're going to want to bring your body back on the ball, actually. Okay. All right. There you go. And then you're just going to lift your arms into a Y. Good. And bring them down. Okay. And then lift them into a Y All position. Right. And to be more advanced, you can add weights, but I don't want to add weights to this. I don't have the smaller ones. You typically start off with ones or oh twos. Oh my heavens, this does work. Oh, yes. <laughs> you can feel this. Excellent. Okay. You're engaging all right, one all more, one more. Okay, and if you'll crawl up, now we will do, I'll have you sit and do a bench press on the ball for our chest. This works our chest, which is our major muscle group, and then okay. for our small body Am parts. Am I going to sit back or what? You are going to... Just sit here. 
Okay. A roll down I'll onto roll the ball down. on your back. There you go. Oh, my, my little audio pack here gets in the way. Here you go. All right. And you are going to bench press. And if you can, push your rear toward the ceiling. So that gives you an added workout for oh my. your legs and your lower my. body. So this is your chest, and it works indirectly, your shoulders, your triceps. All and right, then let, let me do it on my own and okay, see if I can good. balance it. You know, already I am feeling more comfortable on this ball. Yeah, it takes already, a little getting used to. Right, and you could do this, couldn't you? Absolutely. For your triceps, yes. Oh, okay. I recommend Here you one go. at a time. Here you Thank go. you. And roll All right. up. Now, got to talk to you about what you do. Mm -hmm. Janelyn is a personal trainer, but she makes house calls, and yes. that is, that's what you're doing now. You go to people's homes. Yes. Uh, do they have to have a like, gym equipment? Um, three pieces of equipment, and I can bring it all. You don't really need any equipment. Um, I can bring the weights, the ball, and obviously, if you're using a ball, you don't need very heavy weights to work with. So you can use your stairs in your house. You can use your home. So you can use all types of things to get and fit. And they can book you by the hour or the half hour. Absolutely, yes. And you'll travel within a radius of how far? Um, it just depends. I mean, we just have to see. I'm pretty much convenient to everywhere, um, the local Pittsburgh area and the surrounding suburbs. And maybe lucky, you know, if I'm lucky, we'll have a studio that we can work out of too. So Great. Janelyn, personal trainer who makes house calls, and we're going to be able to send you, you just go to our link, our website, and we'll have a link to how you can get in touch with Janelyn. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you so much. much. Thank you. Now, if you would like to have information about anything you've seen here on LifeQuest, just give us a call or check out our website. You can always reach us at 412-622-1575. Make sure to leave your name and phone number, though. We want to be able to get back in touch with you or visit our website at wqed.org. I want to thank everybody for joining me today. I sure want to thank you. We hope you stay connected with us each and every week. I'm Melanie Shano. Remember the good years start right here. Be well, everyone, and we'll see you soon.